Buongiorno freaks and geeks. You would be forgiven for thinking the title of this video was leading to something mischievous or an act of harm, but the only act of harm was done to my own well-being and ability to interact compassionately to anyone that was trans, refugee or anti-fascist. It has been a rough ride. So let me start by clarifying the parameters. For the purposes of this video, when I say followed, I mean that I clicked this button on Twitter so that my algorithm could pick up Darren's toxicity quicker and I subscribed to Darren's YouTube channel. Then I came to my senses and quickly unsubscribed. Like what, what the f was I doing? This channel's not even that hard to find. So the dates on screen illustrate the time period I performed a sadomasochist equivalent of wearing spiked knickers. And I'm not kink shaming. I honestly tried to make it to seven days, but my anxiety levels were through the roof. I'm now addicted to protein shakes and attend the gym seven times a day. I might even have PTSD. Full respect to anyone that follows this twerp all year round. And with over 250,000 people currently doing it, that's a lot of anxious and or angry people. For me, the first step to recovery is to admit I was wrong for consuming everything Darren had to offer. Truth be told, I do feel bad for taking aim at such a fresh faced puppy but actually let me just check his age. 29! Oh I'm working on demon time now. There will be no mercy. Your soul is mine. This 29 year old believes you can catch the common cold by standing in the cold. Who raised this fool? Anyway, without trying to apply intentions to his words, which he hasn't given to us, I will try to analyse the impact of his rhetoric and whose interests they actually benefit. Admittedly, I have featured Grimy in some of my previous work and even responded to one of his fascist tweets on Twitter. But when asking the question, who is Darren Grimes? There is Darren's version, his opponent's version, and the true version. I will never be able to concretely prove the true version. So let's start with Darren's perspective. There is no better way to find the answer than taking a microscope to his online social media bios. The Darren Grimes Linktree page is as generic as the next person, providing pathways to his YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. I'm too old for TikTok, too many real friends to have getter, too smart for Facebook, and I only use Instagram for animal videos, and it will not be sullied by this dweeb. So my focus was narrowed. When first clicking on his YouTube page, it is clear Darren has a chip on his shoulder that he would testify was put there by the liberal left. Throughout my life, I've been told that things can't be done, that I should know my place, and that someone from a working class County Durham background shouldn't be getting ideas above their station by seeking to influence British politics. Hey, hey Darren, um, qu quick question. I'm going to need at least one name for that claim. Wait, what was that? I just go f myself. Okay, fair enough. I guess I will return to this later. On a side note, I found it more interesting that he didn't link the Reason.UK page, a website created by Darren himself. He even appears in the introduction video. Nonetheless, the Reason YouTube channel didn't escape my purview. When I first read, help keep Darren online, I seriously thought he was having broadband issues, but it's to help independent journalism. And by supporting this independent journalism. Darren quote tweeting articles from the Express or Daily Mail and calling it independent journalism is the equivalent of vaccine skeptics conducting independent research on Facebook. But I do like that Grimes self identifies as a journalist. Now we just need to persuade him that it's a good idea to extend that same right to trans people. The self identification bit, not, not the journalist bit. Big D hasn't been active on Getter since February 2022. I can only assume there aren't enough liberals to wind up on there. I do appreciate Darren is consistent with the tagline. Freedom fighter, broadcaster and supporter of the silent majority. I do wonder what freedoms have been removed for him to fight for. It hasn't gone over my head that Darren has changed his tag on Linktree. How convenient is fucking that? Caster is doing a lot of the heavy lifting in Broadcaster. Grimy is on YouTube just like me. Even Wikipedia has only listed him as a digital manager and political activist. The voice of silent majority. I guess he could be described as a supporter of the silent majority if you ignore the existence of the Daily Mail, Daily Telegraph, Daily Express, The Sun, Mail Online, GB News and most Tory MPs in Parliament. If Darren wants to think most people in Britain have the same beliefs as him, who am I to argue? However, I do take disagreement of the use of the adjective silent. Let's stick a pin in that word. 
because we will revisit whether this majority or their views are silent. Were you silent or were you silenced? In his GB News bio, when talking about the show Real Britain, Darren says my show is a bit of everything. I love covering the news, I love current affairs, I love politics, but most of all, I want to do it with a bitter personality that doesn't leave you bored to tears. Who believes that? Because if you believe that, I need to go and get my psychological assessment kit. If you believe that, I need to go and get my psychological assessment kit. And you need an intelligence test right now. Twitter enemies of Darren Grimes would call him crafty wanker. Other critics wouldn't lose sleep over calling him a hateful sh The replies to any of these tweets are a treasure trove of insults. For example, The IMS forecast is about as accurate as Mystic Meg's horoscope. Don't you be rubbing your crystal balls on video again, Grimes. Once was enough, thanks. You are a sexual offender. Today's Darren Grimes horoscope. Today's a great day for a crafty wank behind the bike sheds. One of the accusations that always catches my eye surrounds the reason for his sudden departure from GB News. A departure Darren refuses to acknowledge within his LinkedIn page. How'd you get sacked from a news station known for trying to emulate Fox News, an outlet that specializes in triggering your lizard brain with hosts like Sean Hannity and Tucker Carlson? Fox News even hid the sexual deviance of predators like Bill O'Reilly and Roger Ailes. How'd you get sacked before Nigel Farage? Up the Ra. Up the ra, Nigel. I mean, I, I know that you said sorry. I know yeah. you're, you get 87 quid. It's entirely within your rights to do that. But come yeah, on, and I do, don't, and, and don't, I do don't try and day. lecture the Irish people about the culture and history and precarious nature of peace on this island. Real Britain with Darren Grimes lasted 35 episodes before being axed. Not that anyone has missed the show since the cancellation. It probably had viewing figures of seven people and five of them were in studio. Just to circle back to this article for a moment, I don't think it would be acceptable if the harassed producer was also gay. I wonder if Grimey imagines he was the victim of cancel culture because he'll be right. Cancelled by them viewing figures, baby, and the alleged sexual harassment. Oh, GB News has entered the new year with a new plan, cut costs, hire more major talent, get off an advertising blacklist and force all producers and presenters to take training workshops brushing up on the law and Ofcom. Whatever happened to go woke, go broke. It almost seems like GB News now realises Fox News only works because America is an open air prison for crazies. Despite GB News binning Darren faster than a two year old MacBook Pro, the red carpet has continued to be rolled out by Afro heathen turns Bible nonce Calvin Robinson is my brother from another mother, the uncancellable Darren Grimes. In this Christ awful episode, the Dudley boys cry about the University of Brighton referring to the Christmas period as a winter celebration. Christian University is trying to cancel the word Christian. I guess Christian University is a euphemism for former arts college. Christianity actually remains at the bedrock, at the foundation upon which much of our nation, most of our nation is actually built, right? Wishing to uphold the past instead of looking forward is fine. Why do you choose to focus on periods that doesn't include paganism? In another heartwarming segment on GB News, the presenters decide to patronize a non-binary vicar in a video titled, The church has been corrupted by the remorseless poison of identity politics. Jesus believed the church was poisoned by money. But maybe he meant the pronoun someone would like to be addressed by. The Bible doesn't really address trans issues. Let me, I've got my Bible right here. Let me go to Genesis. That's it? I'm sorry, uh, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, yeah. he created him. Male and female created them. Why, why stop there? Keep reading. Get to the page where the Bible states what should happen to openly gay men. No. No, I don't think I will. So I think you understand the point I'm trying to make. These soulless ghouls see the world in a very narrow and warped way. Even cherry picking the parts of the Bible they want to uphold and would like to see a world where other people are forced to eat those cherry pickings. Sounds a bit fascist. 
GB News is a safe space where people can condescend, stoke up fear, bully and just make up statistics. Well, I think actually if you look at the way in which younger people are coming through to the church and there are actual statistics which might surprise some viewers that show, especially when it comes to higher Anglican churches, there's been an uptick in people that have been wanting to come to these places for that, that rich inheritance. Uh, Darren, could, could we get a citation for that? Oh, what was that? I should go f myself. Okay, fair enough. Guess we can just ignore the findings of the British Social Attitude Survey. Grimy has put us all right. Anyway, other people have taken up the fight against Darren because he once campaigned for the Liberal Democrats in Brighton before turning heel for the money and backing the Brexit campaign, in addition to other hard right positions. I'm more concerned he travelled all the way from Newcastle to Brighton and didn't pick up an interesting personality along the way. Also, turning conservative is the most liberal democrat thing you can do. Nick Clegg anyone? Darren was asked for his opinion on Charles Kennedy after his death. Why the BBC would speak to a 21 year old Lib Dem supporter is anyone's guess. But I'm sure it had everything to do with the time Darren spent with the BBC and the months he was Liberal Democrat social media manager. And I really shouldn't say this, but f it. If I typed turf into an AI generator, this is the picture I would expect to spit out. Darren shot to fame after appearing on Channel 4 News following the hotly contested EU referendum in 2016. We decided to um, go forward as a Britain with global horizons, a Britain which is more internationalist, free trading, and I really look forward to an exciting future now. It fascinates me that a young Darren Grimes is able to be calm, collected, unflustered, and provide a positive but incorrect image of leaving the EU by looking his political enemies in the eyes who can only respond with personal attacks and meaningless anecdotes. Some of my friends did vote for Brexit but they voted for it intelligently unlike that young man there and they voted for it with an educated mind. And I'm very sorry that a young man like you have been so misguided as to actually think that we haven't just, I was going to use a very rude word, in relation to your future. He went into the lion's den and came away looking like a victim in the eyes of the lion's viewers. And these lions are supposed to be the bleeding heart liberal types. Contrast this behaviour in front of his target audience. Ask yourself this Calvin, right? Does Archbishop Welby really reckon that in pandering to those like this bingo individual, that they're actually going to bring a new woke audience to the Church of England. These are the kind of people that would quite like to do away with the nuclear family, with the state, with key pillars of our societies. And to, I think to indulge them is to indulge a new intolerance, not to uh, do away with intolerance in wider society. Sounds a bit sneering and patronising to me, which is consistent with a person that has platformed proud racists, sent out a back signal to homophobes, explaining he's the gay guy they can trust. Whatever gets those donations rolling in, I guess. I can confidently say Darren was born in County Durham, grew up in a single parent household and is openly gay. Because you identify as a Christian and as, as gay, I'm saying identify, you are these things. Grimey went to Tanfield Co-Education School, who have chosen not to include him on a list for notable former pupils. <laughs> Davin attended the University of Brighton and packed it in after a year, which makes this quote about the university even funnier. Who ultimately cares what Brighton University's Marxists and vegans get up to down there in the South Coast? But Anyone to the left of Mussolini should be considered a Marxist and vegan. Without exaggeration, I would say the information provided by Wikipedia alone gives us the context as to why Darren Grimes is the attention-seeking, fact-denying, shock jock we see today. But I'll probably tie that together in the conclusion. The Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 16 verse 27 Idle hands are the devil's workshop And he has turned Darren's fingers into an Amazon warehouse It bent the walls of my reality how often he would tweet My brain could not keep up I sat there questioning whether Darren was part of a pay to tweet scheme at Twitter How many times a month do you tweet? Like um, three, three, four, three or four times maybe I gotta pump those numbers up Those are rookie numbers in this racket 
I thought I was going to be able to sit here and scrutinize no more than 12 posts. This guy tweeted 60 times in five days and only four of those were retweets. He spent three tweets referencing a street name change. You would be forgiven for thinking it was either a slow news week or we were in the year 1892. You would be wrong on both counts. Darren here wishing a racist street name was kept because it is part of heritage. The type to cry himself to sleep because they tore down all statues of Hitler. Now, I don't know whether he is being consciously or unconsciously misleading here, but anyone that knows the smallest thing about local government knows £180,000 does not go a long way. With a population of over 260,000 people, that is 73 pence per person. During COVID, the government spent 700 billion, which equals 14,000 pounds for every adult. Do you feel 14,000 pounds richer? Even the most cursory investigation reveals the local government carried out a consultation with local residents before changing the name. Sounds like, what do you call it again? That thing. Oh yeah, democracy. To make matters worse, the mushroom head took joy after the sign was vandalized. I love seeing fascists enjoy criminal damage and lawlessness when it supports their worldviews. Grimey spent a combination of 17 tweets spreading hate towards trans women and asylum seekers. Just over 250,000 trans people in the UK. This figure could be more but we will never know because coming out as a trans person means you are more likely to be rejected by family, be living in poverty, be homeless, participate in self-harm or be hospitalized after a suicide attempt. There were 48,540 asylum applications in the UK in 2021. The UK has a population of 68 million people with many children living in poverty. People picking between buying food and heat in their homes. So it amazed me that Darren dedicated the majority of his social media presence to victimizing 300,000 people under the guise of being a country loving conservative. The 16 tweets listed under other were put there because they seem to be one off posts that didn't fit under any other category. Despite Darren having over a quarter of a million followers on Twitter, replies are full of triggered liberals. For example, three years ago today, I'm incredibly proud to have campaigned for and played a small part in helping bring about our withdrawal from the EU. Why are you proud of it? What benefits has it given us? And yet you can't name one tangible, demonstrable, evidence-based benefit of leaving the EU. Shame on you. You have literal sawdust for brains. Which is great for Darren since the Elon Musk takeover because the algorithm is f I'm no longer shown people I follow, instead it will be people with the most engagement. Oh f I just realised I didn't need to follow him because he would pop up on my feed anyway. Let me just remedy that. Anyway, the more ridiculous Darren can be, the more reaction Darren gets from angry liberals, meaning the more Darren's tweets are shown on the timeline, which can be a marketing tool for whoever is paying Darren to post these nonsensical claims. Look what I've just got. No more EU. Is that cap lined with tin foil to stop all those brilliant thoughts from escaping? You are defiling that shirt. Dude, the EU still exists. To be honest, I think Darren and Sophie have the same GB news handler who sends them morning emails confirming what issues to focus on. If Twitter is fertile ground for inciting hatred and winding up the Wokies, video and content creation is definitely used to reinforce a worldview amongst the base. The anti-woke, Marxist-hating, flag-shagging, politically incorrect base. All the videos I watched during the week were published on the reasoned YouTube page. And 75,000 subscribers is a good following by any standards. I just wish the video content matched those standards. The videos this week focused on a wide range of topics trans climate change art wokeness yeah that's about it i'm not saying people don't find these topics important but i can guarantee discussing these topics will not result in a person getting fair pay from work put food on their table or heat their homes look at the thumbnail of the video titled leave kids alone ideology the nhs and our schools the painting innocently says protect trans kids and the response is leave our kids alone.
I'm lost. Are you saying you have trans children and don't want them protected? Or do you believe there will be a mandate to make every child trans by 2040? And the video itself is not much better. Now, critics such as today's guest have raised concerns that sexual predators could actually obtain one of these easy to access self ID certificates and access single sex spaces and potentially place at risk vulnerable women in toilets, in changing rooms, in refuges, prisons, you name it, and potentially place women in harm's way. Sexual predators have commonly used positions of power to carry out crimes like entertainment, priesthood, the police. Becoming a trans woman is not a position of power. What we're saying is that experience and history and fact teaches us that people who are sexual predators, people who do want to abuse children, will use any loophole available for, to them to gain access to vulnerable children. And that is the issue here. Can I have some of these loopholes, please? Also, have you made attempts to plug those other loopholes? you know, new gender for three months. They're saying that actually this just re reduces the regulatory burden and that actually it's an anti-trans argument to suggest that it could be abused. Well, I think it's very naive to think that it won't be abused. Um, you know, the, the, unfortunately, the papers are full week by week of... of um, cases where uh, people have abused all sorts of processes in law in order to commit crime. And yet you have done nothing to protect women and children from the police. Service that was found to be institutionally racist, along with accusations of institutional misogyny. Police officers can murder women and abuse children, but not a peep from these goofballs. As soon as someone mentions legitimate concerns, you know the next thing out of their mouth is going to be bullshit. Uh, and they could potentially lead you down a, 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 a journey of permanent, permanent change. So, for example, you know, a girl who starts injecting testosterone because she's read about it online and someone's told her how to do it. You know, if you inject testosterone for long enough, you can become infertile. You can uh, lose all potential sexual function. You can have a deep voice and stubble uh, for life. You know, those are not uh, irreversible changes by any means. And yeah, I have so many questions. What are you smoking and who is your dealer? What child is able to get hold of testosterone without their parents knowing unless their parents were bodybuilders? Also, you are mixing testosterone and masculinizing hormone therapy. Does she think cis women don't have facial hair or deep voices? How do you not consider this to be project fear? This is testosterone use and this is MHT use. Uh, but there's also a big safeguarding issue about that because one of the many reasons that people don't raise safeguarding concerns in, say, for example, uh, su 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 suspected child sexual abuse, um, like we saw in, in Rotherham, um, is because they worry that they're going to be labelled as bigots or, yeah. or whatever it is. This video is repulsive on an unimaginable scale. Within the space of 15 minutes, MP shared opposition to the Scotland Self-ID Bill by saying 16-year-old children are too young to recognise gender and adult men will use it to sexually abuse women and children. There was another 15 minutes to watch and I couldn't finish the video. And I would actually say to her, should you really be doing these kinds of interviews? I mean, look, look at how that went for your dad, right? He thought he'd had a fantastic interview, the Duke of York, Prince Andrew with the BBC, he sat there proud as punch to BBC Newsnight and look at what that did for him. In a video with another one of my favourite fascists, Darren compares a princess having an interview about climate change and slavery to her dad trying to persuade the public he didn't have sex with that teenager. Activism that's going to lead to us being colder and poorer and you're doing it, Jess, around the moneyed elites at the World Economic Forum in Davos, who are undoubtedly making vast sums of cash, cash that's sloshing around this net zero straight jacket that governments across the West have tied us all into. Who told you that? The private energy companies. There is another option, Darren. Nationalise the energy companies and cap the prices. In summary, in the world of grimy, Bringing attention to the climate crisis and modern day slavery is bad. Traveling around the world and reinforcing British imperialism and colonization is good. So I do say, why can't these pampered princesses just shut up, right? Just shush. This man believes in women's rights, everyone. So I do worry that actually the death of the queen has been the death of a, of a, a quiet, a composed, non-activist monarch and monarchy
that you know was not at risk of this kind of activist politicization that I'm afraid it's starting to dip its toes into. The Queen met the British Prime Minister every week. Does Darren think they were swapping decoration tips? I don't know about you, Darren, but I'm fed up of the British public having to fund this woke nonsense. I swear to God, this libertarian has the cadence of a washed up comedian touring casinos just to keep the lights on at home. So there's like this blank space which I'll put up on the screen saying that this is to display the absence of um, black women's artwork. Instead of actually showing the abilities of black artists, they just show this like performative nonsense. What do you think about that, Darren? Well, hey, I wish I could get paid for showing a blank room, right? I bet they've made a pretty penny from that, Jess. What a novel experience. What a great idea to make a few bucks from the art scene scene who are, you know, applauding that kind of wackery and walkery over, you know, artistry and craft. I'm I could watch these two all day trying to describe art and not realising they are describing art. I need to know what would constitute art for these fascist goobers. I don't understand why it needs to be spent on these metropolitan hubs just to have an attack at the Tory government. It, it, it does smack me as indulgence in the extreme and the government taxpayer shouldn't be coerced into funding this kind of propaganda. It's not art, it is political propaganda. What the fuck? I mentioned Blair earlier, you know, this march through the institutions. The Labour Party, in their time in government, were, have been a hell of a lot better than any Conservative at actually getting their people into these institutions, onto these boards of the Arts Council and all the rest of it. And, you know, these are the fruits of that progress or lack of progress. Are you suggesting the government should put spies in institutions so that they are more positive about government action? What the fuck? I don't have any sympathy for the Tory government here because at the end of the day they're the ones in charge of the public purse and they're about as good at protecting that as you know a Kardashian is on Hollywood Boulevard spending vast sums of cash on goodness only knows what. A bit of a weird analogy. Darren is more obsessed with identity politics than the Liberals, and he loves to exhibit the fact his political compass is broken. Tory parliamentary candidates are being given lessons by Conservative campaign headquarters, that's the, the beaten heart, Jess, of the Conservative Party, on white resentment, unconscious bias, gender identity, microaggressions. These are all the kinds of things that you would put in the camp of the Labour left, right? You would put in the camp of the hard left. Someone should tell Grammy he is describing liberal identity politics because of the lack of class analysis. But we all know what emotional buttons he is pressing inside his viewers by saying hard left. I want conservative politicians to be aspiring to making life better for working men and women in this country. I want conservative politicians to be seeking to conserve the nuclear family, seeking to conserve uh, our precious institutions, law and order in Britain, our borders, conserving, protecting nationhood and sovereignty and all of these vitally important things. He is a fascist. At the end of the day, you know, going back to what Martin Luther King said and uh, content of your character character not the color of your skin it's hey darren could you tell us what you said in, in like the rest of the speech ah i should go f myself yeah okay no problem this video also illustrates that darren has absolute disdain for the equality act 2010 the equality act the equality act of 2010 jess i think that's the sleeper cell that's responsible for much of of this pervasive ideology that's running rampant through the British state. I think the Equality Act is what is responsible for all of this. And it was a plan to trap the Conservatives into pursuing this equality agenda. Except when the Equality Act can be used to dunk on trans rights in Scotland. Now, the bill would mean someone aged 16 can change their gender without a medical diagnosis of a gender dysphoria and mean that you only have to live in your favoured gender for three months taking it down from the current two years with medical checks and balances. Now, Westminster say that 
well, hang on a minute, mate, essentially, that this would actually interfere with equalities matters in the rest of the UK. And this individual is claiming to be on the side of good. Truth be told, this could be the greatest long con in history. Darren asserts he is taking on the establishment media and requests you join him on the journey. Next challenge that I want to bring about, I want to take on the established media in this country, a media class that thinks anyone that voted Brexit is racist that anyone concerned about the migrant crisis running rampant at the British border is xenophobic, or anyone that believes in biological sex is a swivel-eyed transphobe. Only showing BBC News and The Guardian does not even scratch the surface of the establishment. BBC figures are dropping and The Guardian begs for donations, just like Darren. Why doesn't Darren include times where he swallows the boot of the media establishment? People can't possibly fall for this, but they probably do because it feels good when a talking head on your screen doesn't call out the horrible beliefs you have and instead labels them traditional values. Is Grimey a grifter? A grifter is a swindler, dishonest gambler or the like. It's really hard for you to say given the evidence, but I have no problem saying Darren is a grifter. Darren Grimes was campaigning for a Liberal Democrat candidate and that person eventually lost. There's a timeline out there where Norman Lamb wins the 2015 party leadership election and the UK never had to watch Darren post this tweet. Why? Darren never founded the pro-Brexit group Believe and Darren never thought it would be a good idea to name a show Real Britain. Instead, we have the Darren that hates striking nurses, teachers and rail workers, defends the interests of millionaires and billionaires by saying they are generous because they pay tax. Newsflash dickhead. Most people in this country don't get the choice to pay their taxes. It is taken at source. I don't know if Darren Grimes believes the bull he says, but he definitely sounds like a person that doesn't understand half the bull he says. I actually have confidence, I have faith in humanity that actually we can come up with some ingenious solution to actually tackle this based around, you know, private investment, all these other things. Who knows, Jess, maybe Elon Musk is going to get us to Mars and we'll all live happily ever after there. Yeah, I would look down in shame as well after saying Elon Musk could take the whole population of Earth to a planet half the size. Darren claims to speak about the issues that Britain cares about. To champion the issues that you care about in real Britain. That may be true, but they shouldn't care about the things he talks about. In the same vein, I don't care how many times he says this, he does not support the rights of women or protecting women and children. When it was announced a Met Police officer pleaded guilty to child sexual offences, the spineless tit wrote this. When it was uncovered that Met Police officer David Carrick used his power and authority to terrorise women for 17 years, not a sound from this mug. Imagine these sexual offenders were trans, refugee or wind turbine. You wouldn't be able to shut Darren up. Men within the Met service have shown us time and time again that women and children are not safe around them. Whether they are taking pictures of murdered sisters, strip searching a schoolgirl, or murdering a woman simply walking home. If you want to have a genuine conversation about protecting women and children, we can do that. Otherwise, move out of the way. And it's beyond disgusting that you are using the trauma of others as a stick to beat the trans community. Darren has never spoken about enacting policies that would keep people out of prison. Then all of a sudden, he cares deeply about women in prison. He is full of shit. But all of this behaviour allows Darren to make money by showing the establishment his views are okay to be funded. And the establishment gets to launder their views through a gay working class mouthpiece on County Durham. Everybody wins. I'm Darren Grimes, I'm 21 years old and I come from a small town in County Durham. I don't have that luxury of being able to progress up the social ladder. Even though I'm a hard worker, I'm determined, but I don't have that financial affordability. A few moments later. And within reason, you can do whatever you want. And with hard graft, achieve whatever it is you want to do with your life. The fact that in 2015 we have kids who are self-harming due to homophobic bullying is disgusting, it is wrong and the government is not acting fast enough on adopting sex and relationship education to teach kids about homosexuality, about transsexuality. 
many months later. Do you hide your political views for fear of being called homophobic, a turf, racist, and even physically attacked for your political views? What the fuck? It's hard to imagine a person doing a 180 on their political beliefs in such a short space of time. That turn would break most people's necks. There was a time where Darren recognised inequalities in society. His views were a bit tame for my liking, but the sentiment was there. Now he lives and dies by culture war topics. One day he's talking about unpaid internships being a bad idea because they exclude poor people. And the next day he's furious because a street he doesn't live down or ever heard of has a name change. Actually, I would say Darren often has to make up reasons why you should be mad about the pathetic that dribbles out of his mouth. But I Actually, I think you and I, Calvin, need to be making the case about why this really does matter. If you ask me, and this whole show, Calvin, has been about the the slow march through our institutions, right? It's part of our na nation's cultural and social inheritance. And it's been corrupted, in my view, by the absolute remorseless poison that is identity-based politics. A master of contradictions, first displaying excitement for a culture war. Each person that steps forward and comes out as a conservative, that brings us one step closer to changing the culture. And that's why I'm doing my bit too. I'm introducing Reason today, a new online media platform providing common sense content to fight the culture war in this country. And claiming to hate it the next. When I said online that if you don't like the use of the word Christmas, you're welcome, you know, to take your culture war and, and take it elsewhere, frankly. Darren is the last person that wants his viewers to not think about culture war topics. Otherwise, they might actually wake up to the idea that they are being exploited by the wealthy. But thanks to kind, quiet patriots. Patriots are people that care about a dating app putting pronouns into their bio section and not the people that care whether their fellow citizens can put the heating on during the winter. I don't know what it's like to grow up in a single parent house, but I know what it is like to be poor. I don't wish being poor my worst enemy. It is hard work being poor, especially in a country as rich as Britain. You are constantly told it's a personal failure if you are poor. And when you take collective action to address being poor, you are called greedy and a Marxist. How can anyone feel good when you are being attacked by government policy? and demonized by the media class. I'm guessing while out campaigning for the Lib Dem in a circle, Darren saw a career he knew would be very difficult to achieve without an enormous amount of luck. Even Darren alludes to this in his GB News bio. But in true grimy fashion, he learned the wrong lesson and decided to become a bootlicker, trying to lobby the government for far right policies on behalf of unseen billionaires. He followed the money in order to escape the poverty he was unfortunately born into. Whether he wants to admit it or not, there are not many investment firms based in Dubai rushing forward to financially back a news station that explicitly advocates for nationalization of public transport and energy, high taxation of the rich and free university education for all. These investors would rather remove focus from living conditions and how they could be addressed with redistribution of wealth, choosing to centre stories of invading migrants, evil trans women and non-binary vicars. If Darren Grimes is not a racist, fascist, transphobe, he is the greatest method actor. This is a man that is proud the one time his granddad left the country was to fight in the Korean War, a war that killed two to three million civilians. What the f Fuck. Why does it not fill Darren with rage that his granddad only left the country to put his life on the line for an ideology that only benefits the rich? So what's the prescription? I think the best course of action is to ignore Darren Grimes. Do not engage with him. We need to continue ignoring him on YouTube and start to ignore him on Twitter. I know I'm guilty of replying to Darren, but I have turned a corner. Let him say stupid things and allow it to disappear into the ether. Allow his Twitter to become an echo chamber like his YouTube page and Getter account. It would eat him up. I'm not here to call Grimy a bobblehead fascist anymore, even if he is a bobblehead fascist. And I don't need to tackle his arguments because they are sh
I will never react to him again. Darren needs attention to survive like a plant needs sun to grow. Giving Darren attention makes a mockery of everyone involved. Like the drug dealer turned most successful rapper turned capital owner Jay-Z told you in 2001. The wise man told me don't argue with fools because people from a distance can't tell who is who. Instead put energy into helping smaller platforms that share your values grow an audience. I would also encourage people on my side of the argument to go on channels like GB News and show how their beliefs don't stand up to scrutiny. If we tackle the people with resources, the money and influence, conditions can start to get better. And I'm not saying we should be like Keir Starmer and tell people what they want to hear, but I do think people need to hear our ideas and why they will benefit from them in the long run. Solidarity between workers is essential to secure a better future. Rich people and toxic trolls have no problem having solidarity. Solidarity. Look at this. Seeing Darren say all views welcome in GB News is not the endorsement he thinks it is, especially after being sacked. But I guess it doesn't hurt his chances of another full time job at GB News if he keeps that boot in his mouth. The marketplace of ideas is not an equal playing ground. If we only look at print media, we have all those publications on the right and a tiny number going towards the left. Darren often speaks about silent majority. When it comes to the newspapers, there is a clear majority and they will never be silenced just because you say so. For example, hosting a news show does not make you a journalist. Writing for a newspaper does not make you a journalist. Calling yourself a journalist does not make you a journalist. In fact, why don't you have a column with some right wing outlet? Even Carol Malone has a column and she has CTE. It's almost like people on Darren's side of the argument don't take him seriously and only want to use his class, sexuality and accent to regurgitate their views and reinforce their interests. But I think Darren's biggest problem in a world where he wants to make money is he doesn't have a Ben Shapiro friend like Dave Rubin or is unintentionally hilarious like Dan Watton. No, but it's not, it's sweet. <laughs> he will forever be a second rate failure in the eyes of the right. If you made it to this point, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. I, I really, I really do appreciate it. So with this video, it was kind of like a palette cleanser for me. Um, there's no way I should have taken this long to release this video. Um, I had a number of things going on, um, including and not exclusive to the fact that I actually went on holiday and actually watching some of the videos by uh, Mr. Darren Grimey, I actually got bored because I felt like my brain was rotting, like the, the arguments he was making and the topics he was choosing to focus on really just made me check out for long parts of it. But we finished it, is what it is. Um, the thing I love about Darren Grimes is that he is just like any other person that has switched from being a meek, uh, well, I was going to say meek, <laughs> uh, a milk toast liberal over to conservative slash fascist. We saw this uh, exact move with Liz Truss. Liz Truss, who had parents for all intensive purposes, were communists, um, like full disarmament, anti-nuclear anti weapons. She especially in her later teen years, was a Liberal Democrat, anti-royalist, spoke really well, very articulate, and then, as you saw, when she became a Conservative, and then, God, I can't even believe I'm saying this, she became our Prime Minister, she seemed like she had a leak on the brain, like there was nothing going on. And you see this with Darren Grimes. Darren Grimes, while he was out campaigning for the Lib Dems in Brighton, actually could string sentences together as soon as he has to turn off his brain and starts engaging with conservative talking points it's not very engaging at all and i don't know if he's aware of it he probably is but then again i guess if you switch to that side you just have to turn off your brain and just not notice anything just be ignorant and move on so i'm just here to say darren is not the cause of 
all of these very divisive culture war topics in this country but he definitely is a symptom of it and he definitely is chasing the money um so yeah people like darren grimes um sophie kokorin i think her name is and these other young people from marginalized communities themselves um choosing to uphold the establishment by yeah defending their interests and just attacking everyone else is just really really it will always be odd for me and i actually have lost more respect for darren now since he chose to actually you know continue bootlicking while not getting paid for it like gb news sacked him <laughs> and he's still he's still taking their talking points and running with it i think that's just yeah that's just really low of the low yeah so yeah tell me what you thought down below um please yeah don't forget to like subscribe and like forward this video to um anyone you think would like it remember i watch these reactionary so you don't have to um but with that being said i'm going to be moving on to um the Labour Party now and Sir Keir Starmer and I have so much material I want to speak about and just as I was getting into it this conservative government showed me how racist they are well I knew how racist they, they are but they kind of like wanted to really hammer it home with this story so it's so frustrating that this government is this bad and we are still questioning whether yeah, Keir Starmer is going to be the next Prime Minister or he's the right person for the job but um, I'll probably save that deep dive for the video when I actually yeah, edit it but anyway, with that being said again, thank you, thank you, thank you and um, yeah, please bear with me um, I'm trying to get these videos out as quick as possible um, yeah, okay I will definitely, definitely see you soon okay, bye